Welcome to the Pro Tips video series designed to arm biology learners with background knowledge needed to kick butt during upcoming lessons. Students are encouraged to watch these tutorials before attending lecture on the topic and rewatch them while studying. I'm Professor Workman and today's Pro Tips review concepts from chemistry. We will discuss atoms. Atoms are extremely small, so small that you cannot see them in a microscope. They are comprised of multiple components, which we call subatomic particles. It is the structure of an atom in terms of how many and which types of these subatomic particles are put together that determines the properties of that atom. These are emergent properties of atoms, the attributes of the whole atom that did not exist until its components came together. So atoms, due to these differences in structure, come in different flavors, and you've heard of them. There are atoms of gold, oxygen, carbon, uranium, chlorine, neon, and so on. <laughs> Each element on the periodic table is a type of atom, each with its own unique attributes. For instance, gold is shiny, conducts electricity, and is malleable, whereas some other metals are brittle and would snap if you tried to bend them into a ring. This brings us to today's key terms. Gold is a type of element. A pure gold nugget is made up of millions of alike atoms, gold atoms. It is the subatomic structure of these atoms that identifies them as gold and underlies their beautiful and useful properties. So each atom has its own elemental properties, and we can define an atom as the smallest unit of matter that retains those properties. To be clear, the subatomic particles alone do not exhibit these elemental properties. Physicists have discovered many subatomic particles, but the three that biology learners must remember are protons, electrons, and neutrons. Here's why. The number of protons in an atom defines what element it is. In this example, I see three red dots representing protons. Using a periodic table to find which element always has three protons in its atoms reveals that this atom is lithium, or Li for short, the metal used in lithium ion batteries. The next subatomic particle is the electron. Electrons influence the atom's chemical reactivity, or how that atom will combine with others to build larger chemical structures. Finally, neutrons contribute to the overall size, or mass, of the atom. Protons and neutrons are big and hang out together in the core of the atom called the nucleus. Electrons are relatively tiny so small, in fact, that they don't have any measurable mass at all. And they bumble around within an area outside of the nucleus called the electron cloud. While the number of protons in an element's atoms is always the same, and usually matches the number of electrons, the number of neutrons may vary. In other words, atoms of an element may have slightly different numbers of neutrons. Another thing to remember about these subatomic particles is their charge. Protons have a positive charge, like the positive end of a magnet. Electrons have a negative charge, like the negative end of a magnet. And neutrons get their name from their neutral charge. They are neither positive nor negative. Now test what you've learned by identifying what element this atom is. Remember, you count up the protons. Here there's just one. Looking at the periodic table, the element whose atoms have just one proton is called hydrogen, or capital H for short. The number of protons in an atom is called the atomic number. What else do you notice about hydrogen? You see that there's one proton in the atomic nucleus and that little blue dot is an electron hanging out in the electron cloud. Do you see any neutrons? They would be in the nucleus and I don't see any. 
Now, what do you suppose is the net charge of this atom? Remember that protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. Since there's one of each, they cancel out and the charge on this hydrogen atom is zero. That's called neutral. Now for more practice, consider this bigger atom. How many protons do you see? Just count them up. I see six red dots representing the protons. Now, how many electrons? I see six small blue dots hanging out in the electron cloud. Now, how many neutrons? These are represented by the yellow dots in this cartoon image, and I counted six of those. What is the net charge on this atom? The number of protons equals the number of electrons, so it's zero. Here's a new question. What is the atomic mass of this atom? The atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So in this example, there are six protons plus six neutrons, so the atomic mass is 12. What element is this? You should recognize that with six protons, this atom must be carbon. Here on the periodic table square for carbon, the atomic number is at the top. It is always exactly six. Six protons defines carbon. This other number at the bottom of the square is the average atomic mass observed in carbon atoms found in nature. Remember I said that the number of neutrons in an element's atoms can vary slightly. This average isn't a round number because it considers that variation. In summary, you learned that an atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains its elemental properties. That the type of atom is identified based on the number of protons in its nucleus. And that its total charge is only neutral if the number of positively charged protons is equal to the number of negatively charged electrons so that they cancel out. You also learned that the size of the atom, called atomic mass, is equal to the sum of protons and neutrons because electrons are so small that they don't have any mass. We also applied the core concept of emergent properties to describe those properties of atoms that are not exhibited by any subatomic component. Things like the atom's chemical reactivity, color, etc. These properties are determined by the atom's subatomic structure. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you might consider watching other videos in the series. Here's my contact information and I always welcome any feedback. mworkman at pima.edu. Good luck in your biology journey.